All right, so there's a really popular uh, smart garage door opener company out there called Chamberlain Group. Uh, they run your lift masters and your Chamberlain garage doors. And recently, they've decided to close their API to third-party integrations. Um, there's a really big online community called Home Assistant for smart homes, and uh, it's all open source. Check them out if you haven't already. I'm a huge fan. Um, and uh, they've had issues integrating with these smart garage door openers lately. And so uh, today I'm going to be installing this in my garage door. It's called a RAT GDO, and it runs on a little chip called an ESP32. And you're gonna plug the cables right there into your garage door opener. And so I'm gonna walk you guys through how to install the software on this chip, and then how to install this physically to your garage door and then to open and close your garage door via your smart home app. Uh, and then at the very end, I'll even show you guys how when my car drives up to the uh, driveway, that it automatically opens the garage door for me. And when I leave the home, it closes the garage door for me. And it only does that for my car and no one else's car. Uh, so stay tuned. Okay, so to start, if you Google rat uh, GDO, uh, you'll find Paul's project here online and uh, you can purchase the board right here for 30 bucks or you can purchase the board with the power kit and the cables. So you may just want to go this route, purchase it with everything. So as you scroll through his website here, um, you'll see that once you purchase it and you receive it in the mail, here it is. Uh, you'll be able to go to his website and click here to launch the RAT GDO ESP Web Tools Flasher. So we're going to open that up. Okay, so I had all the possible issues you could have when trying to install the software on the RAT GDO. So I'm going to walk through them so that uh, people out there maybe uh, get educated by it. First, um, it's kind of obvious, but make sure your USB cable is not just passing power to the device, but that there is data flowing through the cable. So make sure you're using the right USB cable. Uh, second, in order to get this plugged into my Mac, I used this adapter that came with the, uh, or that I bought a long time ago. This adapter doesn't work. Um, this is the uh, AV multi adapter from Apple. <clears throat> uh, doesn't work, don't use it. So what I had to do was find another uh, way to uh, plug this in. All right, so I had to go and find another uh, USB hub, which I had lying around, and that enabled me to plug this in to the uh, uh, laptop. So let's head over there so you can see. All right, so here we are at my uh, docked like desktop setup. So there's the laptop we were using earlier. You can see I'm plugging into my USB hub over here, and it also powers my display. So I had to use this USB hub. Um, basically, first I had to find the right USB cable. You can see all these different USB cables I was trying. Uh, here's the USB cable that worked, and I'm gonna plug it in to uh, that hub real quick and uh, this is gonna power up. All right, so I got it plugged in and the next issue I ran into was I would go and select RAT DGO uh, or GDO from the web installer, click connect, and I'd only have a Bluetooth choice here. It was not actually seeing the USB device that I had plugged into my, my uh, Macintosh. Okay, so then when I tried to exit, this modal popped up telling me you may need to install some drivers. Turns out that's exactly what I had to do. Um, so if you read the instructions right here, you can see you need some drivers. So you click on it. It's in Chinese. It's very convenient. <laughs> click the download button over here. Go ahead and download it. And uh, It downloads this directory, ch34 serial underscore Mac. I double click the PKG file and installed the PKG file. I won't do it again, but just go through the install. And then 
I had, if you look over here under my USB settings, so if you go to Apple and you go to about this Mac, you get this small window and you go to more info and you get this window and then you go to system report and you get into your system information, go to USB. And finally, I had this USB 2.0 serial uh, like driver indicator here. So after I got that driver installed, then I went back to the uh, install or the, the web installer here, click connect and voila, I have choices of like, it's actually detecting the USB device plugged in. Click connect. Install rat GDO. I'm gonna go ahead and click erase device. Click next, click install. So it's gonna take a moment. It'll wipe the device completely and it will install the firmware onto the little ESP8266 chip. So let's give it just a moment. I'll fast forward through this. Okay, so we can see the installation was complete and we have a bright LED on the board here. Uh, we're gonna click next. And now is the time to connect it to our Wi-Fi. All right, so we are connected and we're gonna click visit device. So the IP address is 192.168.10.121. Um, you may wanna go and set that to a static IP on your network. Uh, you, you, you know, if this, if this device keeps rebooting for some reason, like power goes out, you kinda want it to uh, maintain the same Wi-Fi address if it reboots. So consider setting it on a static IP. All right, and uh, in a moment, we're gonna go through and add our MQTT server IP address and port. So uh, let's do that now. I'm gonna pause for a moment. All right, so on the left, we have the firmware for the uh, RAT GDO running at IP address 192.168.10.121. And then on the right, we have Home Assistant here. So in Home Assistant, I can go to my settings. I'll go to add-ons and you can see my MQTT broker is running right here. Um, I know the credentials for it, so if I was going to connect to it, you know, I'd connect at 192.168.0.4, so that's the Home Assistant server um, that MQTT is running on. Uh, port 1883 is default. Um, my user is MQTT user, and then here's my password. So now I'm going to go and uh, type that into the RAT GDO. You can look on the side of your garage door and you can see, you know, who the manufacturer is. And then if it says security plus 2.0, so I'll do that for now. Uh, save, config, and reboot. So let's do this. Hopefully it keeps the same IP address. Let's try, I didn't actually uh, set static IP address yet. Oh, uh, please fill out OTA and web config password. Okay, so we're gonna set up a password here too. Um, let me uh, define that password real quick. All right, so it's now rebooting with uh, all the Wi-Fi credentials, the MQTT credentials, um, the password that I want it set at, and uh, it should in a moment, there it goes. So I use this MQTT Explorer, so you're able to see like kind of behind the scenes. Uh, you can see RAT GDO is here, you can see the availability is online, and if you go to the Home Assistant uh, prefix, you can see like under light that there's the, there's the light for the garage door and the cover for the garage door, so the actual door itself. Um, I think there's a button or a sensor in here too. But anyway, um, once they're created in MQTT here, uh, you'll be able to go into Home Assistant, go to your settings, go to integrations, uh, MQTT, <clears throat> and you have a new device, RAT GDO is here. And so uh, you see I have door, I have light, and I have obstruction. Now, these are all not receiving any signals right now because they are not hooked up to the garage door. So now is time to go and uh, hook it up to the garage door. 
All right, so I got a white, a red, and a black cable here, and I'm just gonna pull in like an equal amount of length, I guess. Let's do kind of like two feet, I guess. And uh, then I take this bad boy, Erwin Vice Grip thing. Thanks to Chris Mayer on the LED channel for turning me on to this tool. And I'll just cut all three kind of in the same place. All right. And uh, super easy to strip cables with this thing. So you're just gonna, let me get a better. Let's do red for example. Maybe it'll make it easier. So you take the cable, push it in right there. The clamps grab it, pull, that's it. Pretty easy. And uh, then we take this bad boy and let's find red. It looks like red control is right there. Second one, so I'm gonna push that second one down. Yeah, and I might have to do this off camera because I uh, may have cut it too long. Yeah, see, it's too long right there. So uh, I'll do this off camera and I'll get uh, the red, white, and black in here. All right. Okay, so we got our red, white, and black cables uh, connected in here. All right, so pretty much just follow the labeling on the back. One, two, three cables. We're gonna try not using the pass-through method and just going directly into the garage door opener. All right, happy to announce that it's working. Um, there is our RAT GDO connected to power back there. And uh, three cables coming out. So power. Um, and then the uh, uh, ground, which is white, and then black, which is obstruction. Sorry for the blurred camera. And uh, those three cables come in. Power goes to the first red block. Ground goes to the second white block. And black obstruction goes to the third black block. There is nothing that goes in this third one here. One last thing is the three cables are right there and they go over the top. Just kind of like uh, his documentation was recommending, those three cables go over the top and they come down and then it's uh, the RAT GDO is right there. And I just kind of like zip tied it there. So I'm gonna cut this off. And uh, yep, that's it, looks clean. Okay, so here we are in Home Assistant, and now that I have my garage door connected via RAT GDO, so I can open and close and turn the light on and off, the question is, how do I automatically open my garage door when I'm driving up my driveway, or close the garage door when I'm driving away from my home? And the way this works is your phone, which has the Home Assistant app on it, uh, is always tracking your location and it's reporting that to Home Assistant. So if you walk around your neighborhood, you would see uh, you know, your, your icon moving around the neighborhood. Uh, but you don't want your garage door to open and close as you walk around your neighborhood. You only want it to open and close as you drive. So the way this works is Home Assistant knows if your phone is connected to CarPlay or even Android Play or Android, uh, I forget what it's called, for Android Auto. Um, and so what you do is you create an automation that says when my phone is connected to the car via CarPlay um, and it has left a certain radius around my home, then close the garage door. And vice versa, uh, when my home, or when my phone was away from my home and then I drove back into the radius around my home then open the garage door so here's how this works um, inside node red uh, if you're unfamiliar 
Node Red is a add-on on top of Home Assistant. So you can go to Node Red here. And you can see I have some logic that just basically says when any person using Home Assistant uh, leaves for 10 minutes, then set the status of that person to away. So what I've done is I've created a uh, input select variable in Home Assistant. So if you go to your settings and you go to entities, um, sorry, helpers, you can create a new helper. And I called it, here it is right here, Acura RDX. And it has a couple different states it could be in. It could be unknown. Uh, it could be garage parked, engine started, garage departure, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this represents the state of my vehicle. And then what I did is I created an automation called Acura Presence Detection, um, such that when Brad's iPhone is in automotive mode, and this is done automatically by the uh, iPhone and Home Assistant integration. So Home Assistant knows that your iPhone is in automotive mode, AKA plugged into CarPlay. So when my phone is in automotive mode and I am away from the home, then the trigger ID Brad driving, it'll come down here and it sets the Acura RDS uh, input select to Brad driving. So what we have now is we have a entity, sorry, helpers, here we go. We have a car where you could see that, um, you know, Olya was driving at this time and then uh, you could see garage arrival happened at this time and then garage departure. So now we see the status of the vehicle and uh, where it is relative to the garage door. And so the final bit of magic is um, when the Acura RDX uh, has changed to garage departure, then if you go down here, you can see it would trigger a rat GDO to close the garage door and it would send the notification to my phone. And likewise, uh, if the Acura RDX changes to garage arrival, right? So you can see down here, then open the garage door. And that's pretty much it. There it goes. And I got a notification on my phone that the garage door is open. Pretty cool.